Hello, everyone. Welcome to Positive Vibe, the evening version of Positive Vibe. I have curated public here in the studio. I have Sandra Corelli. I hope you guys are ready for this night with Sandra Corelli. We have a lot of great information. And you know what you got to do? You have to dress for the queen that's coming on the show today. So I'm dressed up her. Get ready to bring her on. I hope you guys are ready to join me in this beautiful event that we're going to have on tonight. Let me get myself ready in the studio here so we can just embrace this beautiful song that's getting ready to come on here. So, y'all, tell me what we got to do. Sasha coming up very, very soon in a couple of minutes. Hope you guys are getting your, getting all of your equipment together, showing your kids and everyone that she's getting ready to be a part of this beautiful broadcast. I thank you for her and I will we'll go, we'll go from here right now. Okay, Sandra, we're ready for Sandra to come on. Hey, Sandra, how are you, my dear, my beautiful I'm sister? I'm great. I'm great. Here, here, here. I, I, don't, I might need a little glass or something, Sandra. For those who don't know, this is Sandra Perella, the lady that you will hear the song Love Again on Diary of a Man, Black Woman. Miss Corelli has accomplished a lot in her career. She is now named Alice in the movie, uh, in the series, Bruh. She has a new song that you hear playing in the background. Tell me what I got to do. Sandra, let's open it up. Let's talk about you. What's going to happen on Sunday? Let's talk about tell me what I got to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's talk about it. I will let it, I will bring it back up as we keep on rolling. Tell me about this song. What inspired you to do this? What inspired me to do it? Well, what yes, is, you know, just what it's saying, you know, I really didn't know. I just, I, you know, I was led in the spirit really to do that song. And it was during the pandemic and I had a chance to uh, film my series in the bubble. And so when I came out of the bubble, mm -hmm. I was like, Lord, you know, what is it that you have me do now? What am I supposed to be doing now? And and I always ask this early in the morning, you know, before <laughs> I start my day. I always listen. And my spirit said, you know, music, your music. And the thing about yeah. what the film, yeah, what the film has done for me is afforded me to do my music. Where I don't have to, Maybe. I remember... Yeah, I remember having to ch chase the charts and all that kind of stuff when I was with the SOS band. And, you know, you, you had to do what the record company wanted you to do. You had to follow the trend. You, mm -hmm. But now I'm in the time in my career now where I can, I can do what I feel is true to who I am. And so um, mm -hmm. in my spirit said, do something that's familiar. Because I usually write my own material. And... Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, okay, well, I'll do that. And uh, the spirit gave me two songs. And one of the songs was Tell Me What I Gotta Do. And uh, I'm a big fan of Al Jarreau's. And I just feel like he, he had such an influence on me when I began to sing jazz. And so, uh, and I know people love him and he had passed. And I was just like, I just, that legacy of who he is. I was like, I want to do that too. But then when I did the... Um, when I started doing the storyboard, as far as the video was concerned, the guy who didn't even know me had researched me. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I wow. realized I watched you last night. He's like, I told my wife, he's like, I'm having a meeting with that lady tomorrow, you know, like that. And then he said, I, he said, but I know there's a lot of people going that lady. And he was like, this is your story. It's like, you've done everything. You've done television, you've done, you know, uh, you've had record deals, uh, you've done movies, you've done plays. It's like, tell me what I got to do, you know, for, because I know what my, how my, fa my fans feel about me, but mm -hmm. to get the industry of the world to even see what they see. And it was like, what do I got to do? Because I've done everything. <laughs> I've done everything. <laughs> I'm just doing some things in the background. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So let's talk about well, let's talk about the scene. How did you choose such a beautiful scene for Tell Me What I Gotta Do? It's it's very, it's airy and it's like nature. It's just everything that's whirling all up into the music and it's fitting. It's it's fitting. How did you pick that 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 place for your um for your video? What an awesome question, Tracy. Nobody really asked me that. <laughs> but it has a lot to do with it, though. It's very connected. 
because also when I got the vision as far as, because when I first did it, I was just going to record the song. But then mm -hmm. I realized people, just like you have your show, they listen with their eyes now. And so mm -hmm. I, it had to be visual. And so again, my spirit gave me certain elements like um, brick, water, and uh, forage, like like trees. And, mm -hmm. and so that's the kind of stuff when I did my treatment, I was telling the guy, producing the guy. I was like, these things have got to be in the video. And, uh, and, and, and really, when you look it up, it does mean something spiritual. I didn't even realize that. But at least I knew that. You know, it's like, because when you go to these people, you got to have an idea what your vision is. You can't go like, hey, can you kind of come up with it for me? You know, yeah, you're, like, you're looking at the watch like, come on out. We only got a couple of, couple of more hours. Get it together. Right, here. right. Because right. <laughs> they need to know what they're going to do. So I was like, at least I knew that. And I knew I wanted to be elevated and all that stuff. I got the elevation thing going on. And um, I thought I was going to do it, like have to do it all over town or whatever. I end up having my meeting at TPO mm -hmm. Studios. Tyler oh, Perry's wow. old studio. Uh -huh. So that's where the video was shot. Nice. Because they were just right. like, you know what? The stuff that you're talking about is here. It was like, we got the brick, we got the building, we, you know, we got the lake, you know, uh, which the building, I'm on the building, I, even though I said that brick is elevated. And I didn't even realize that too. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, I'm like, that was in there too, about the elevation <laughs> and the um, and then then I realized that my people were like, you know, they had been like locked in their homes and just to give them a, uh, a view of the outside and mm -hmm. feeling nature. And, and because that's like, when we do that, it's, it's so God, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so the spirit, connected it in the spirit. Yes. And so I was like, I, I'm going to do it location. I'm going to do it outside where people will be able to feel free and because they've been locked in. And so they don't want to see anybody sitting up in a, you know, sound stage with the funny lights and the, you know, mm -hmm. and the shots. And it just, and it did. It went right along with the song. I said, this will be the song natural. that. It was natural. Yeah. So natural. Yes. It wasn't like yes. it was staged or anything. It was natural. You seemed like you were in your element out there with the trees and with just nature. Singing yes. with the birds. You're, 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 you know, you sing with the birds anyway. You sing like the birds. You know what I mean? Especially when you're on stage. So you were in your element. I truly enjoyed the video. We're going to be talking about, you're also going to be at the the, uh, the city winery on September 15th. Are you going okay. to sing that song at the city winery? But you know what? You know, I have to go back. Fifth, I'm sorry. I, yeah, fifth. I, and I don't know how much time we got, but I need to go back because um, your discernment. You know, you just keep saying things that are connected. So mm -hmm. when you said something about the birds, it's it's in the beginning of the video, you hear these birds. They're really the bird. That's not bird sounds. Wow. And the whole wow. time we were filming, we could hear the birds in the background. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But people don't, they think that's probably, you know, artificial. They that's put sound machine or something, a sound machine. No, that's what was, and they were. As the music was going, the birds were singing. You know, so you oh, just you just know when el when things come together like that, you just know you heard the right voice. <laughs> you know what, too, Sandra, you know, the thing about that, too, is there probably were so many other elements, so many other animals, should I say, that were surrounded there, you know, just feeling that good vibe that you have with music. Your voice is, your voice is powerful. It's healing. And you know oh. what, I, while you're out there doing your video, there were probably... I don't know, it's just squirrels or whatever that fish, all those things that were around that were like, wow, this is this is all right. You know what I mean? Yes, that's, yes. Just the type of, that's just the type of person that you are. I have to say that. Oh, and I'm thank just you. Really blessed to even be a part and see you in on the stage doing what you do, singing and healing at the same time. Because let me tell you this, and I don't think I said this to you. However, when I first got to Atlanta, your show was the first show that I've ever went to in decades. Wow. I came to Atlanta and didn't know anybody and I felt like I was connecting, you know what I mean, with someone mm -hmm. that was not just a beautiful songstress, a bird, you know, a beautiful songstress, but however, a beautiful person. And mm -hmm. it gave me a calmness because here I am in a city where I know no one. But when I, after there, I was like, wow, I feel like I, I feel like I can hang in here. I, I feel like I belong. After that event, I'm telling you, this is, I was That's ready to, awesome. I don't know if you see me crying because you were, you sang that song Testimony. And I'm like, yes, she she's talking to me. Oh my goodness! Yes. So thank you. 
Thank you. And thank you for telling your story because that that's going to bless somebody and encourage somebody to step out on faith. I mean, that takes a lot of courage to do that. And, you know, a lot of people will not leave their land. And sometimes they can't get the blessing that was intended for them because they won't move. Mm -hmm. And it's so, all about moving. It's all about stepping out. So, yeah, so I'm just so glad. I'm so proud of you. I mean, look at you. Oh, man. I'm, <laughs> it's just giving me chills because, and you know what, too? Also, I want to talk about, you know, we're going to talk about Bruh. We're going to talk about Alice. We're going to talk about Emma. We're going to talk about Brenda. We're going to talk about all these characters you play and how they, how are you able to separate the, separate those when you're on stage performing? That's um, a gift. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, once you step, you know, sometimes it's when I put the clothes on, you mm -hmm. know, the wardrobe uh, <laughs> changes you because you go like, but you don't dress like that. And we, mm -hmm. and that's why when we go and go somewhere like really like elegant, fancy and that kind of thing, we wear certain things because it causes us to act a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing when you go on stage, you put these clothes on and these wigs and after a while, it's not you, it's, it's the clothes and the wig and the script. You know, mm -hmm. so that's why um, that happens with me a lot uh, as far as like being able to change. Because, you know, some of my wardrobe um, designers, they, you know, they go like, time you try on your clothes, girl. You just become that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and they're all beautiful. I, I can't tell you that I've ever seen anything that wasn't so elegant, elegantly made, just fitting for you. And not only that, fitting for the atmosphere and the songs that, that come out of you from the spirit. They, they are, they're all, it's like God is still carving you and he's carving a beautiful item. Now, let me tell you this. It's oh, that's awesome. Beautiful. Um, and I know you're going to bless people tremendously on September 5th, which is Sunday. Yes, Sunday. Bro. Yes, yeah. yes. I get my Sunday brunch and uh, it's going to be at City Winery, Atlanta. We start at 12 o'clock. Um, I wish I could drive down there real quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I miss you being here. But oh, um, we have a, 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 I have the opening acts. And so it's a couple of uh, gospel artists that will be on. But I get a chance to do my Urspa Jazz. Now, I always, you know, implement it. I mm -hmm. mean, somewhere in the show. But all of it would be Urspa Jazz. All of it. So you'd be getting stuff from uh, the Real Me CD, which is my, my total inspirational uh, mm -hmm. CD. And so I'm just so glad. And, and God just knows when to do it. And I think yeah. at Tommy, this particular Tommy time, Fraser. yeah, I, I just, this particular time, um, I just need to be fed. And it, even in me getting fed, see, they, they'll just happen to be there, mm -hmm. you know, because it starts with me. Amen. And so when I, when I do it, um, I just get filled and I have enough to pour out. But it's like, you know, the people just happen to be there, but I be saying, Lord, I need this just as much as the you know, and it's And it's healing for you to see, you know, people that, you know, I mean, because I know you feel the energy of people that when you sing, you feel the energy and you see people, you know, kind of waving and you do something when you sing till you do that, that, that body shake. Tell them about that and how <laughs> that inspires you. Not only just you, but you sing it. It inspires other people that are watching. I mean, we're talking the person that's at the door. We're talking the about the person that's playing oh. the drums. Your husband's that's playing the background. We're talking about the waiters, the person that's pouring the water. You inspire everybody, every person in the building, even to the child that came in with his mom. You know, because my son had, you know, was there to see you as well at one. Yes, I love so, the artist. And you know, you know, he yeah. was painting the picture, you, you and I awesome. still have that picture. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I, I told picture. him that. Yeah, and I have a picture of us together with the picture. You know, oh, you know what? Um, that was nice. I enjoyed yeah. that. that. That was my. I was in my element. I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to leave my child. But I was like, this this was a blessing. <laughs> God gave me open the door. I knew he was fine. I was like, sit here. I need to go and work this for songs. I need to do what I need to do. God just gave me this platform to do it, and I had fun doing it. So thank you for the opportunity to spread some positive vibes in the atmosphere while you were performing. Thank you. Yeah, so but much. you always do. And and the thing about it is like, you always feel the urgency, you know, cause people, you know, they always have really great intentions and, and I appreciate that. But I know when people are assigned, they, they get an urgency. And oh, yeah. so it's not about, I'm going to do it. They do it then, you know, it's because that's the way it works. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, cause if you miss your opportunity, you miss your time then, you know, everything's out of line. 
So, you know, why things are in line, you need those people to do their assignment, you know, to be there for what they need to be there for. Amen. You know, Amen. so Amen. You, you were there at the right time, you know, Amen. and, and, you know, a lot of people don't know how much, um, goes into preparing, you know, and oh, so yeah. you were saying that how the clothes fit and all those kind of things, all those things are thought about, you know, and that's part of my, that's part of my theatrical background too. You know, I don't think all, um, vocalists really think like that. They just think like, this looks good on me, you mm -hmm. know, what can look good on you, but two, also it can complement your environment. And so that's that theater thing. You know, my set got to be, you yeah. know, I got to have a set. A purple mm -hmm. dress girl, you be wearing that. <laughs> that purple one and also the that silver one you wore out when we when you did the outdoor the outdoor jazz event the silver one with the lights and all that jazz that you had going on oh that was just I'm telling you guys I am telling you you have to make sure you purchase your tickets to go to the city winery on September 5th and not only that you guys need to pop this your talk to your local radio stations to play tell me what I got to do yeah. this will set the mood and, and you know what? Let me tell you what it made me do. Tell me what I got to do. It made me clean my house. <laughs> you don't have to tell me no more. And you know what? I want to tell you guys this. You know, Sandra is not only, she's not just an actor. She's a friend. And she's also a mother figure. That's why I'm dressed as I am. Because she's a queen and you have to dress the part. I tr I'm truly Aww. honored to have this conversation with Sandra. Because I know she plays a lot of mother roles in some of her, in some of her plays and things like that. But that's who she is. I mean. I remember her having her and I having a conversation and I took it, you know, too hard as to what she was telling me to do and what I should do. And I, I said, you know what, this is this is real because anytime someone tells you something and it's from the heart, it's love. So that was love. So thank you, Chandra. I truly appreciate yeah. everything. Aww. Even even to telling Hassan what to do and how to do it and, and all those things. I appreciate that. But it's not about me. This is about you your music, where you're going, the city winery, and your, um, you know, tell me, tell me what I got to do. Also, we're going to be talking about bruh, Alice, the A and J. Let's talk about that. I, you know, I, I am so tickled. You know, the one part I did, the last thing that I seen when the girl asked you about a gentleman and you, and you told her something, I didn't expect that to come out. I was like, oh my goodness, but that's true though. And you said, what, part, what part is, you know, that part, you know, we were talking about that. So let's talk about the A and J and also talk about your, you know, your role as Alice is being, how far is that from you being that, that mother, that part of the, the role that you play as on Alice? Well, you know, it's, it's so interesting because, um, because you have a son, I have a son. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to a certain degree, uh, I can relate, you know, um, I was, uh, you know, I was raised by a single parent. And so I relate to that. And mm -hmm. the thing about it was when I first did it, I was so consumed with, is you know, Tyler works really fast. And so he was ready to do it. As soon as it, you know, the opportunity with BT plus came, you know, he had to pick the cast. He did da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like, yeah. And I get into it. And like I told you, once I put on my clothes, I become the person. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to do. We do something called uh, back work, you know, backstory. But you create this this person. It's just not a name. You're like, oh, the, she's from, you know, South Carolina. She's from da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Alice is from Atlanta, so I had to say she's from Atlanta. And as I said, uh, she was um, she she was a nurse or whatever. And when her mm -hmm. son got into this thing where he needs this money, she put all her life savings in it to help him have this business. So you have to create this story, you know. Um, but in the, as it went, I was just like, that's right. I was raised by a single parent. Wow. You know, and I can relate to that. And I have a son. So, you know, that's why sometimes now Tyler, now I, I can see, you know, God working in a lot of stuff. I mean, just mm -hmm. as you grow in your spirit, man, you begin to see those spiritual things. But since I've worked with him, he's always been like that. He's always wow. been um, discerning. Um, uh, he's like a prophet. I mean, it's, it's crazy because... Everything that I've done, I can go back and relate to my life. The work that he's always given me. That's amazing. Somehow he's a brilliant, he knows, guy. brilliant man. Yeah. And I'm going like, wow. You know, okay. Well, I can relate because of that. And then all this stuff that was happening with the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and these young Black men getting killed. And then I know some people were saying, well, she's kind of hard on John, you know. Mm -hmm. And I realized, I was like, no. These women who are raising these black men, mm -hmm. 
have to be a certain way. They oh, got to yeah. be the mother and the father. And they're living in a world where some, in some places they don't care about your life. And so you don't have time. It's like, it's, it's like I have to love you hard like that. You know, it's got to be a tough love because, I, yeah, I love you too much to sugarcoat it and you go out there and you not be strong. And then not only that, you know what, you know what then if you don't nip that in the bud right there and then, you're going to feel guilty. Like I should have nipped that in the bud like yesterday. Yes. And they went out and did what I, if I would have corrected it right there at that moment, that exactly. wouldn't have happened. Exactly. Exactly. And so I started thinking, you know, yeah. I mean, so when I, you know, talk to talk about Alice, I mean, then I started getting um, uh, single mothers that started making comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, about stuff I wasn't even thinking about. She was like, I totally get Alice. You know, she was oh, like, yeah. that's me, girl. That's me. <laughs> me and too. Me I just too. think that, you know, I've had the opportunity to do a lot of different characters. I just feel like everybody's story has the right to be told. Amen. And we can't, as, as and me as an actor, I never can judge the character. And I really have to find, you know, uh, a common ground with them mm -hmm. and say, I'm not judging you. And everybody has their story. That's why when you say you you like when I do testify, it's because telling your story is so important. Amen. You know, yeah. It's like, and if you're not who you are, if you're not being true to who you are, then you're not telling your story. And so then your purpose is not being fulfilled because that's what it's all about. We just live this life and the life tells the story, you know? And so once you get to a certain point, if you're fortunate enough and blessed enough, you can articulate it to somebody. You know, you can you can tell them. Some people are not getting the chance to tell it because they're waiting. We don't know. We just don't and know. And if you don't tell the story, your story could be the story that could save somebody. It could help somebody. It could heal somebody. So if you don't tell your story, they could they could be going through exactly what you're going through. Like right now, we're having this conversation how you created you know, tell me what you want, tell me what I got to do surrounding your life. Someone else is feeling that same way right now. They don't know what they, what they should do, what they shouldn't, you know, as far as in the situation they are in right now with the pandemic, children going to school, getting the vaccine, should they do it? Should they not do it? Who are they listening yeah. to? All these things are going around. We have to really just speak truth. Wow. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just so kidding. many questions. It is so many questions. And also it's important to tell your story because you don't want somebody else's interpretation of it. Cause that's going to get in the way too. Amen. Amen. You know, now so you know, yeah, now it got to come from, as they say, the horse's mouth. <laughs> Amen. You don't want it to come from it. Then if you don't tell your story and then someone else tells it and it's kind of similar, it's not the same. No, never. It's Everybody's DNA is different, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, so and that, let's and talk that, about radio, um, this radio, this radio sprint that we have here going on. And also we're going to talk about team song, so team Sandra too. All those, okay. all those students and everybody, how we meet and have a great time talking, you know, in regard to yes. helping each other, supporting of each other. And how yes. the, has the pandemic changed your life? Well, it's, it's changed. Uh, well, you know, the thing about it is it's about relationships and the valuable, the valuable relationships were the ones that were front and center. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, um, you need what you really need. And other things are just there. You know, that's what it taught me. You know, the value of things, not to take things for granted. Um, as an artist, for me too, personally, um, I was doing so much. It gave me a chance to sit mm -hmm. and be still for a minute and not just do it because I can do it. Um, and so when I decided to go back doing it, 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 when I do it, it means something to me. You know, I understand what it's like not to have it. Um, I understand if I take it for granted, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I can see it, you know. Um, oh, yeah. So, and also it taught me the things that uh, I had put away uh, came in handy. And I don't mean food and money. And I don't mean that kind of thing. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, my relationship with God. Amen. And truly those things, those things, those relationships, those things that, you know, I um, invested in that was a value mm -hmm. because I did notice that the, the things that when people didn't store up those things, they were the ones that were in trouble. They right. were the ones that were worried. They were the ones that were stressed, you know? Okay. So you want to store good things. That's Absolutely. that's one of the things that and also we can't forget about storing that relationship with our family. It's taught us because we've been so busy, 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 busy. Everybody was going around doing this, doing that. You know, no yep. one sat at home and ate dinner as a family. And that's what we, you know, we we, we, we were taught, you know, back then. I know when I was younger, we all sat around the table. We ate as, as a family, you know, yes. not just at Thanksgiving and Christmas. This taught people how to, you know, start cooking meals inside the house, communicating <laughs> with your brothers, your sisters, your your husbands, your wives, and things like that. It tells us that we have to. You know, this is poor. You, you, right you know, it probably was some bad meals. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because people were eating out all some the time. People were going out for a reason. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people were. I mean, they. That's just what they do now. Back to um, what? What's next for Sandra? What's next? What do we? What do we got going on next besides September fifteenth? If you what, had what, a place, let me see. Let me see, let me ask you this: If okay. you had a dream place to perform. Where would that place be and why? Wow. Like Carnegie Hall, someone like that, where, you know, all the greats were, you know, like, you know, Leotine Price and all those people and Sarah mm -hmm. Vaughn and all those people. Yeah, that's, you know. Well, we're going to see this. You know, that was like, yeah, that was like the, the, the high crust, you know, um, and, and with an orchestra. You know, doing what I do. Uh, yeah. yeah, that would be, yeah. And it's gonna, yes. it's gonna happen. Yes, we speak that and put that in the atmosphere. Yeah. Amen. And yeah. you know, let's talk about jazz because you know a lot of young people. I mean, because with the music that's going on here today, it's a lot of music that it has meaning, but it really doesn't have meaning. A lot of people don't even know what the meaning of jazz is and what's behind jazz. Can you answer that for them so they can find out what, you know, what, what is jazz all about? I mean, it's yeah, not just about instruments, it's about your voice. And what does it mean for them? How can we pull these young people in? I've listened to jazz. I started at like, it was like five, in between five and 10 years old. I wow. was my own, we played jazz. So I just kind of, I loved it from then. So how do we pull these young people in to listen to jazz? It's beautiful, all these instruments, and it's real. Well, you know, uh, first of all, it's the original... Uh, the only original American music. See, it was created here. Everything else was brought here. You know, mm -hmm. European music was brought from Europe, you know, opera and all that. And uh, jazz was created here, you know. Um, and I know they want to say, and it, I mean, they can say they came up with hip hop music, just like, you know, you just, it's just a part, an entity of another kind of music. Mm -hmm. But jazz is of its own. It's, you know, it was just totally of its own. And it was created, music is one of those things that chronicle the times. So our music is a reflection of whatever is going on in the world at that particular time, mm -hmm. and all, all the music. So, I mean, you know, from disco to whatever. The, at that time, um, you know, we will be creating our own black people work. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a type of way of expression so we were in the in the in you know in this phase of expressing who we were, mm -hmm. and so um, that's how jazz kind of came about in, in during that time. Uh, what and just that alone should, you know, make somebody excited about it. Uh, also, a lot of the songs that hip hop uh, samples, I, a lot of it is from the with it R and B music or whatever. Um, most of those artists, those musicians, were jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. You know, the Earth, Wind, and Fires, the the Cool in the Gangs, the you know, it just goes on and on. You know, they were jazz musicians. They were just able to play any kind of music, mm -hmm. and that's the thing about jazz. You know, it, it's um, I don't think that you necessarily just have to be able to know theory, but it teaches you uh, maybe like a good start, like a standard. And then mm -hmm. you build from that, you know, but I, you know, 
I don't know where uh, music is kind of going uh, because after a while it had to become like a, a people's palate. It had to become like regular people can like listen to it. And so now we have like smooth jazz, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So now we have smooth jazz and then you don't have to be this uh, connoisseur of, of jazz, you know, mm -hmm. like pure, we call it a pure form where you're listening to people like, you know, Charlie Parker and, and those kind of people. But in their set, when you listen to their stuff, it's like the expression, the way they're expressing themselves. They go, they move outside of themselves. It's just, right. and, they're, and they're just like when the rappers, um, they call it spit or whatever, when they do that and they improvise and they just come up with stuff, that's what the jazz musicians were doing. You know, the, you yeah. know that's where they got it from. You know, wow. they got it from those guys doing that. So, you I are mean, schooling it, it's tonight. beautiful. It's, it, you, huh? are schooling you are schooling them tonight. And you know what music is? Music is a ministry. You know, it, like the jazz, you know, when you listen to jazz, for me, anyway, I can speak for myself. Jazz, for me, it, it's soothing. I can't speak right. It's soothing and it allows you to think. And if you allow it to minister to your mind, it's healing. And, you know, in music, that you listen to it, heal, it, it's healing for your body. It allows your cells to renew, it allows your brain, your electrodes and your brain to react in a positive way, especially if you're listening to positive music. People don't realize that music interacts with their, with, with how they think and how they go yes. throughout their day. Yes. I mean, I mean, I think people realize that too, um, during the pandemic when they couldn't hear live music, you know, when I recorded, uh, tell me what I got to do. Um, also in my spirit, it was to record it in real time. That mm -hmm. means I was in the studio with the musicians and we were, you know, we were not phoning it in. We were not putting it down and sending it to each other. We were doing it right there. Uh, so, so the people could feel mm -hmm. of the life force because that's what it, that's what we give off when we perform. It's like a life force. All the stuff that who I am comes out when I sing. That's the mm -hmm. same way it is with the musicians. And that's what the people were missing. And so even though we did the uh, live streams and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. when they realized they could come and hear somebody live, they probably didn't even know why, but they knew something was missing. And that was that life force, that oh, energy yeah. that you get from flesh and blood, you know, um, mm -hmm. that really can't, sometimes things can transcend through that, mm -hmm. but now you know the difference. Now, right. you know, it, right. it, it's nothing blocking. It's nothing in between. You know, you don't have a, a middleman, you know, uh, you get it directly. So, and when you say that about jazz, jazz, seeing jazz live, oh my goodness. And I'm just, just watch I, I was the in there like, go through. I mean, it, I felt like I went in there one way and I left another way because it was soothing. <laughs> it was just the atmosphere, you know what I mean? It was just, it's yeah. just a beautiful place to be, Sandra. And I'm so glad that you, are able, that God has able to, and you're still here doing the work that God has called you to do, to heal people, to save souls, and through your ministry, through your music, and also through your acting, you really have done well. You know, God is good. You have a long way to go. We're going to see you at that, the center where you said you're going to be with all those big, those big people. I can see you on the next cruise ship, you know, the jazz cruise ship, whenever they do that with Tom Joyner, if they're still doing that or however, I can see you there. I can see you all over the place. And if I can do anything to help you get there, you have my number, you call me, you let me know. One last question I have, I don't want to hold you okay. long. Is, okay. How was it working with Tyler Perry? Wonderful. I know. It it's wonderful. Um, it's wonderful because he's a person that cares. So it's always important to work with people that care. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I got to a point where even the, the people that I, you know, I would hire as musicians, I had written, because when I was younger, I wrote, surround yourself with people who care about you. Because, I, you know, sometimes early on in my career, you know, I would just sing with people and that I didn't need to sing or whatever. And sometimes they didn't care nothing about me, you know, and I could tell when I was on stage and I'd be trying to do this and, and they'd be back there doing whatever they're doing. Because they, you know, they're just like, well, this is just a job. Well, okay, let's get this. this done and be over with. Yeah. Uh, and I remember saying that. And, and, I, and I've stayed true to it. And, and Tyler's one of the examples. Uh, when I met him, he cared about he cared about me as a person, but he also cared about my talents, you know? So, and he still has that. 
And so um, I, I love that, you know, working with him. He cares about his people. Uh, but also the fact that he stretches you. You know, uh, when you work with a person like that, that's on that kind of level. I mean, he's mm -hmm. on a genius level. When you work with those people, uh, you can't come to where they are, but they force you to stretch your mm -hmm. way there. Yeah. And so that's what I love about it. It's always going to be a challenge. It's always going to be a challenge, and you always deal with your relationship with God with Him. Amen. That you, I don't right. care. You know, I was working with people who were atheists. I didn't even know it, but you know what? They had to deal with it. Amen. I mean, it wasn't Him pushing it. It's just what happens when you're in His presence and dealing in His element. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just going. It's going to happen. It's going to come up. And you deal with it whatever way you do. The world says let your light shine, right? So once you let yeah. your light shine, people will yeah. draw yeah. all men to you when you let your light yeah. shine. Yeah. But so, I you know, always, it, you know, I always get better with him. And that's what that's what I love about you know working with him is that like I say, he if he believes in you, he just puts you out there. Amen. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, you and know, I know he doesn't believe in you. And I know he's getting ready to. So for this, I just want to say I got this information and I want to say happy birthday, pre-birthday, September 13th to Tyler Perry. I have a wonderful birthday and congratulations on receiving an award, you know, at the Emmys for all the stuff yes. that you are doing. Congratulations. Keep doing what you're doing. And you know what? One thing I want to say about bruh is my son says it all the time to his brother. He said, come on, bro. Come on. He said, bro. He said, bro. So I was like, wait a minute. Wow. And then to see you in the studio with all these young men. And being that mom to all the other men as well is I'm right there with you. Yes. You know, and when I first saw it, I was just like, he was like, yeah. Okay. So the show name is bruh. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I will get the bruh, you know, <laughs> but then when I, well, when I figured it out, when I saw it, you know, I started reading, I was like, I love this. This is about four black men and four successful black men that, that have a relationship. And it's really about their relationship together. And the women, because one thing about it, uh, women are very important to oh, this yeah. world. Amen. You know, when they say girl magic, black girl magic, mm -hmm. especially. Yes. Come on now. It's real. You know yeah. It's yeah. real. It's real. And you know, we yeah. are living in a time right now, uh, uh, Mother Sandra, I say we are living right now in a time where women have broken the ceiling because there are so many women in high leadership positions right now yes. so we are ruling the world by god's yes. grace and yes. we are the we are the multipliers of this earth so i wish you the best of everything that you Thank do you. i wish i could be there with you on on sunday me too However, i am there with you i'll tap a glass hopefully i'll be able to see i'll be i'll, I'll be looking for something online that i can see hopefully nobody will okay kind of videotape it and not pay i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> I Maybe wish you were there too, but thank you so much for having me. Um, you're you're beautiful person, beautiful spirit, and your thank show you. is just blessing so many people. I, you know, I drop in every once in a while. I, and I, I saw I, you I always pray. I was like, I was so like in my element. I pray before I get on my show. I just ask God to guide me in, in whatever way He wants me to go, and when He brings it to me, I know it's of God because I pray for it. And sometimes I don't even speak out loud. I say it within myself, and He still yes. does. It. So, yes. Sandra, yes, keep doing what you're doing. Keep blessing hearts. Thank keep you. Here of those men. I know, I don't know what, what's next for bro, but I think the next thing that God has for you is going to be so big. I want you to grab it with both hands and enjoy oh, the ride. Yes. I thank you so much. You so thank you. And uh, continue. A hey, continue to have this great show. And I see bigger things for you too. Amen. I, I, receive, hey. it. I receive it all in. I receive it. God bless you, Sandra. I love you. Thank you. It's for already being done. Amen. Amen. It's I already received. done. Hey, leave us Take a positive care. vibe on this Friday evening. After the world is going through all this craziness, leave us a positive vibe on, the, on this evening before you leave. Don't ever give up on your dream. No matter what people say to you, no matter, sometimes you're your own enemy. Do not allow even you to put doubt in your mind. Once it is set, it is done. And all you got to do is do. Amen. Sounds great. God bless you. I love you. I, I will love see you, you um, at the next event, probably. <laughs> I hope so. You're going to see me there. I don't care if I got to walk. With, I got to come with a camel or a horse. I'm coming. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. You take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.
Well, ladies, that was Sandra Carell, truly a great inspiration. I hope that she's blessed you guys. You're welcome to the Positive Vibe Show. She has some great tips in regarding acting and also how she came up with her song. I want you guys to purchase that song today. And also, don't forget to request that song at you on your radio stations far, near, and wherever you are. Because, you know, this song is going to bless your soul. Let's listen to some jazz and I sit back, kick back, and have a great night. Have a great, uh, have a great night. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in on this Friday evening special occasion of Positive Vibes. Have a great night.